Hello, my name is Kent Hall. I'm a market development specialist at Bear Crop Science. Today I'm excited to talk to you about cereal diseases. Specifically, we'll take a look at the key cereal diseases in Western Canada, the impact they have on farming operations, and some tools that are available to help growers manage these disease concerns. There are many different types of cereal diseases that come into play. For the most part, they can be broken down into three main categories. Rusts, that being stem, leaf, and stripe rust. Your leaf spotting diseases. Septoria leaf blotch, complex, tan spot, spot blotch, net blotch, and scald, along with fusarium head blight. When we look at rust diseases, the key is to protect the upper leaves in the canopy that deliver most of the photosynthetic energy to fill the head and develop the kernels. Specifically more, when we look at stem rust, they can have an additional uh, negative impact in terms of infecting the stem, weakening it, and causing lodging. Rusts are unique in that they require an alternate host to complete the sexual stage of their life cycle. In Western Canada, these alternate hosts are non-existent for the most part, so we rely on the asexual stage of uh, reproduction for any spore production with our rusts. Due to this, the spores are fairly short-lived and not hardy, so they generally do not overwinter in Western Canada, the exception being minor cases of stripe rust. So we totally rely on inoculum transport from the United States up into Western Canada for infections. In the case of stem and leaf rust, this inoculum generates in the southern U.S. and is transported up on wind currents into the eastern prairies. When we look at the western prairies, the primary disease of concern is stripe rust, where a source of inoculum is developed in the Pacific Northwest and transported into the western prairies. There are many tools that growers can use to manage rusts. One of the primary ones is the use of resistant seed varieties. Another key factor when we look at stripe rust in the western prairies is field sanitation and choosing the location for your winter wheat fields, making sure they're not placed beside an infected spring wheat field is essential. In addition, there's a number of excellent fungicide products, including our products Folicure and Prezero, which are excellent for controlling rusts. The major leaf spot diseases that we deal with in Western Canada are the Septoria leaf blotch complex, which can infect wheat, barley, and oat, tan spot, which is a wheat specific disease, spot blotch, which can infect both barley and wheat, but is primarily found on barley, scald, which is a barley specific disease, and net blotch, which is a barley specific disease. So the leaf spot diseases share a number of common characteristics. Generally, they overwinter on infected stubble and crop residue. Some can have a seed-borne component as well as a soil-borne component. Diseases are spread by wind and or rain splash. As well, a key common characteristic is that they're polycyclic, meaning that they have many cycles of spore production throughout the season. This can have a big implication on disease development. Basically, they can wait out until conditions are conducive and pick up their cycle from there. This means that they can occur throughout the season as well as blow up and cause big issues in a short period of time. When we look at leaf spotting diseases, it's essential to protect the flag leaf. The reason being the flag leaf is essential to develop the photosynthetic area that goes into filling the head, developing the kernels, and ultimately providing yield at the end of the day. There are a number of different tools growers can utilize to manage leaf spotting diseases wider rotations and residue management, basically reducing the level of inoculum present in fields to cause disease. As well, there is varietal resistance that can play a benefit. This resistance generally is partial resistance, so applying other management practices in conjunction with it is key. If leaf spotting disease pressure is not a significant concern when the flag leaf emerges, bear crop science DST data has shown there's an economic benefit to waiting and applying that fungicide at the head timing. If your scouting does show that there is significant leaf disease pressure coming into flag leaf stage, we recommend looking after that leaf disease with an application at the flag leaf timing. 
and a flexible product like Follicure here has an excellent fit here. Applied from flag leaf through to the end of flowering, offering you a wide window to protect your crop. Fusarium head blight can impact the crop in a number of different ways. It can reduce yield and grade by producing fusarium damaged kernels, or FDK. These kernels are shrunken, shriveled, and often have a chalky white appearance to them. In addition, fusarium head blight can produce mycotoxins, primarily deoxynivalenol or DON. Deoxynivalenol can have a number of negative impacts on the end use quality of the grain. It reduces baking performance, pasta cooking quality, malting and brewing performance. As well, it reduces the suitability for livestock feed. Definitely depending on the animal, there's fairly low tolerances to the mycotoxin dawn. In addition, fusarium head blight can reduce the quality of the seed for replanting purposes, reducing germination and impacting plant stands at the end of the day. Surveys have indicated that there's a shift in the fusarium graminarium population to a new chemotype or strain, 3A dawn moving from 15A dawn. With 3A dawn, it's a much more potent dawn producer. In studies, it's been shown that it produces two times the amount of dawn than 15A dawn. This has a big impact on our grading system. So as of 2010, the Canadian Grain Commission has tightened the fusarium damage kernels, or FDK, standards in our grading system. There are a number of different strategies producers can use to manage fusarium head blight. If you're in an area where fusarium isn't established, it's key to use seed with no detectable levels of fusarium graminarium. As well, that seed can be treated with a product such as Raxel Pro, which will reduce the risk of seed transmission and prevent the buildup of inoculum. In addition, it's key to learn the symptoms of the disease so you can identify it if and when it does show up. As well, you can look at using resistant varieties if they are suitable for the environment and quality characteristics you're looking for. If you're in an area where Fusarium graminarium is established, planting seed with low levels of Fusarium graminarium is key. If you look at some of the recommendations from Saskatchewan Agriculture and Food, they recommend a 5% level of Fusarium infection or lower and to use a seed treatment with that seed. In addition, rotation from cereal crops or non-host crops is key to minimize inoculum, generally two years away from small cereal grains, and try to avoid corn in the rotation. Any strategies you can take to promote residue breakdown is key as well. Effectively chopping, spreading straw, looking at tillage to bury, and speed the breakdown of that residue is key. As well, genetic resistance is paramount, using the best resistant varieties available. In addition to this, we can apply a timely foliar fungicide, such as Follicure or Prezero, suppressing the disease as well. If you're in an irrigation zone, managing your timing of irrigation, limiting water just prior to heading and through flowering can help minimize the environmental conditions, reducing the chance of fusarium head blight developing. Prezero offers the best suppression of fusarium head blight. It provides multiple active ingredients with both preventative and curative activity, leading to higher yields, improved quality, with plumper kernels, higher test weight, and more bushels at the end of the day. Prezero provides the most effective dawn reduction in wheat and barley. For more information on fusarium head blight and the tools used to manage it, please view bearcropscience.ca or contact your local bear crop science representative for more information.